Hi, this is Dr. Homer Lim and you're listening to your Holistic Health Podcast. Welcome everyone. This is Dr. Homer Lim of the CDCPH. So for this particular uh, webcast, we'll be talking about uh, the new iProtect protocol, which is the iProtect 3.0. This is based on the newer guidelines set by the FLCCC by doctors here, Corey and doctors uh, Paul Marek and Al. So the reason for this update is because of the new Delta variant, which seems to be more aggressive and more infectious. So we have come up with a newer updated guidelines, which also includes uh, IV therapies, especially for those uh, doctors who do a home service or for nurses who are actually uh, have access to uh, patients who want to do IV at home, okay? So again, uh, what I want to point out is the dosing is uh, dependent upon you. If you think that you need to increase the dose or decrease the dose, depending on how you find uh, the patient, uh, that is your uh, prerogative, okay? So from the previous protocol of 0 0.02 milligrams per kilogram body weight for ivermectin, the newer guidelines have set it to be at 0 0.04, 0 0.02 to 0 0.04 weekly. Or if you would base it on the new FLCC guidelines, they recommend on a twice a week. However, if you do not go out, I mean, if patients don't go out often, then once a week would be sufficient. But for those who need to go out every day to work, or if you're a, a frontliner, a healthcare provider, then we do, we do ask you, uh, we do recommend at least a twice a week uh, protocol or regimen, which is once, uh, maybe a Monday, Thursday, or a Tuesday, uh, Friday, okay? Now, aside from that, I think what's also important would be the use of the oral and nasal hygiene. So we recommend either you use Bovidone iodine, uh, 0 .0 to 0 0.04 to 0 0.6 dilution. Now, if it's that's not available in the uh, pharmacies, so what you can do actually is you can buy the ordinary betadine, okay, ordinary betadine. And what you do is you mix it one is to 10 because your povidone iodine for wounds is 10%. So if you dilute it to one is to 10, then you will get around 1%, which is almost normal and you can use that as a nasal or oral uh, spray okay now if it's not available you can also use hydrogen peroxide the hydrogen peroxide in the pharmacies are usually in color red which is 10 percent the color blue is uh, uh 20 percent okay so i would suggest you have to dilute it again 10% hydrogen peroxide is a bit too strong for an oral or nasal uh, wash or spray. I would also suggest you to dilute it. One is to 10 uh, dilution to get a 1%. Okay? But if you get the blue ones, which is 20% uh, by volume, then you have to mix it. One is to 20. Okay? One is to 20. For nebulization, we will discuss it further. Uh, you need to further dilute it for uh, for the nasal nebulization, okay? Now, for prophylaxis, again, uh, the dosing is now uh, twice a week. Uh, for, again, it's the, the, rather than the, the, aside from the dose and the uh, amount of ivermectin, uh, you also have to also consider, you have, you might have to take it twice a week if you go out often, or if you are a uh, frontliner. Now, again, there's no difference between iProtect 2 and iProtect 3 with regards to mild COVID symptoms, except the dosing. So the dosing is now 0.4 to 0.6, which is two to three times more than the previous recommendation. That's because of the Delta variant being more aggressive. We noticed that in patients who have uh, started their ivermectin or started treatment later than a week, the, the chances of the 
the patient getting worse is actually higher, uh, then you would need a higher dosing of ivermectin. So for the Delta variant, we suggest uh, a 0.4 to 0.6 milligram per kilogram dosing. So that would come out as before, if it's one, tab, one capsule once a day, it will come out as one capsule twice a day or one capsule three times a day, okay? Now we didn't change the, um, the antibiotics together with ivermectin because we have uh, seen that doxycycline or azithromycin together with ivermectin works better than ivermectin alone, okay? Now what we also included is not, before it was optional, now we really include this in our uh, protocol by using inhaled steroids for patients who are over 65 or over 60, or if you're over 50 and you have comorbidities, or in fact, if you have comorbidities, it doesn't matter where you're, whether you're 40, 30, if you have obesity, diabetes, hypertension, kidney disease, then we suggest you start on using inhaled budesonide twice a day, okay? Now, of course, as part of the protocol, including the uh, ivermectin, we also added vitamin C. You could see it's one to 2,000 milligrams three times a day. Vitamin D, 5,000 units, which is significantly higher than uh, the previous recommendation. Uh, then we added quercetin, zinc. And here now you can see we added hydrogen nebulization if it's available, okay? Now we suggest, okay, we recommend the oral food grade hydrogen peroxide, okay? However, if you cannot get food grade immediately and there's an emergency, you suddenly develop or your, your family or loved one suddenly develop COVID and you cannot find the food grade, you may use the uh, store shelf or the, uh, the drugstore uh, grade hydrogen peroxide but we still recommend the food grade because food grade do not contain heavy metals as compared to those what you, set, what you see in drugstores, okay? So now for, for nebulization, it's three drops with every uh, three cc of saline or distilled water and you nebulize every six hours, okay? Now for melatonin, you could see there, we make it one to two milligrams per kilogram in divided doses, okay? So if you are 60 kilograms, then you will need around six, uh, uh, six milligrams or 60 milligrams to uh, 120 milligrams, okay? Now there are already uh, compounding pharmacies wherein they will able to compound melatonin in 10, 20, or 30 milligram uh, tablets or capsules, okay? And then we have aspirin and acetylcysteine. And then we added also the Montelukast plus cetirizine, okay, which is an uh, antihistamine together with a mast cell stabilizer, okay? Now, for those who like to take in Lianhua, uh, they can still take it. Now, normally, it's dosing for Lianhua is two, four capsules three times a day. However, we do notice a lot of people complains of having gastric irritation, diarrhea, if they start taking four uh, capsules three times a day. So we suggest at least two capsules three times a day if you develop uh, gastric irritation or diarrhea, okay? Also, we have to note in patients with hypertension, Lianhua may actually increase your blood pressure, okay? So I think that's very important for you to take note uh, if you have patients with hypertension. Now, for moderate to severe COVID, once their oxygen drops below 95%, the same recommendation. However, the dosing is the important thing. You have to give uh, methylprednisolone uh, at least twice a day. Uh, if they are heavier, uh, then you might need to increase their methylprednisolone to one to two milligrams per kilogram per day. Okay. If methylprednisolone is not available, you may switch to dexamethasone. But methylprednisolone is still the drug of choice, as it prevents, or at least likely to develop hypertension as well as water retention, okay? Now, again, for those who are obese or those who have significantly lower uh, SpO2 or oxygen saturation, you might have to dose methylprednisolone to 1.5 to 2 milligrams per kilogram 
divided into three or two doses, okay? And then dexamethasone, you might increase to eight milligrams twice a day, okay? Uh, for moderately severe, you could see, uh, we always recommend if patients already have moderate to severe COVID, we suggest to put them on sublingual route of uh, ivermectin. So that means you have to remove the capsules, put the powder under the tongue. If you have tablets, crush the tablets, put the medicine under the tongue, uh, you know, for about a minute or so, and then you uh, drink some water, okay? Just to, for those that uh, uh, particles that still has not um, dissolved with the saliva, you have to drink some water to uh, absorb the still remaining powder, okay? You could see the vitamin C has also been increased to 2,000 to 3,000 three times a day. Vitamin D, 10,000 IU a day. Uh, you may, you'll be able to get 5,000 vitamin D in 5,000 IU tablets or capsules, okay? So uh, then you can take two uh, tablets or two capsules every day. So, and then here, uh, if you already have moderate to severe, uh, your oxygen saturation drops, you have lots of mucus, you have, you will have patients with having sudden drop of oxygen, not just because of the COVID, it actually it's a mucus plug, plug uh, obstructing airways. So you really need to do some nebulization uh, at home, okay? So you, I nebulize with hydrogen peroxide, or I would suggest both. I would suggest hydrogen peroxide, alternate with uh, ipratopium bromide or salbutamol, twice a day, every 12 hours. Now, if you have patients who have, uh, you know, increased heart rate or those patients who are a bit old and they are they cannot tolerate the salbutamol, then you may use uh, ipratopium bromide uh, only, okay? So, of course, moderate to severe, melatonin, you could see now the dose is four to eight milligrams per kilogram. So a, six, a 60 kilogram person, that would be already around 240 milligrams per day. Again, you may get this from compounding pharmacies wherein they can compound melatonin in 40, 20, 30, 40, uh, or even 60 milligram capsules, okay? Now, you could see here for those who have for anticoagulation or to prevent thrombosis, you may use aspirin. Some people who cannot tolerate aspirin, you switch them clopidogrel. If they have signs already of uh, thrombosis or high numbers of uh, D-dimers, you may give them apixaban instead of aspirin or clopidogrel, okay? Now we also added in uh, N-acetylcysteine uh, three times a day on 1,200 milligrams. Colchicine, I would suggest this for patients who are obese, who have uh, multiple comorbidities. It's twice a day for three days and then once a day. So you also have to watch out. Colchicine may also cause some form of diarrhea. So you have to be aware of this so patients understand the diarrhea could be from COVID or it could be colchicine. So you just have to be able to know which one is causing the diarrhea, okay? Again, uh, Montelucas and Cetirisin, uh, we found that uh, this combination is very good in patients with COVID. Again, and again, you could see Lianhua, you can now take two to four depending on their uh, tolerance. Now, uh, this is what we added as an outpatient protocol. It's called Leronlimab. Leronlimab is a monoclonal antibody. However, you as a doctor, you may uh, ask uh, for what we call compassionate special permit uh, in, uh, from Chiral Pharmacy or Chiral Pharma, which actually distributes Leronlimab um, in the Philippines. Okay? Leronlimab is a monoclonal antibody. Uh, it helps significantly in patients with cytokine storm, with moderate to severe COVID infections. We have found out that leronimab is very, very effective. Even if you've given it late, it still has a significant impact on the uh, outcome of patients with COVID. Okay? So the only issue, again, with leronimab is you need a certificate or a compassionate special permit, which leronimab will assist you I mean, chiral pharma will assist you in um, 
obtaining that special permit, uh, the normal time from application to uh, release of the permit is around 24 to 48 hours. If you can get it, if your patients can afford it, then that would be ideal. Okay. Now, you may also have you may also do or give them fluvoxamine if it's available. However, fluvoxamine is not available. It's not a registered drug in the Philippines. Uh, so as same as with ciproheptadine. Um, this is especially good in patients who have what we call serotonin syndrome. So who are this group of people uh, who develop serotonin syndrome? Usually their platelets become very low already. Their D-dimer is elevated. Then they might also develop what we call diarrhea due to serotonin syndrome. So you may opt to give uh, uh, pamotidine if fluvoxamine and ciproheptadine is not available, okay? Now, we also added in patients with high androgen states. So usually these are men who are obese, who have some form of male pattern baldness. Also, uh, you know, they have signs of benign prostatic hyperplasia. We found out that um, um, these androgen blockers also help in blocking or preventing the COVID virus from uh, assimilating or infecting your cells. So it's it, so you can give them either dutasteride or finasteride or spironolactone. Okay. However, you may only give them for the first ten days. Okay. If you find them late in the disease, maybe they're already in their second week or third week, these androgens might not be effective already as the virus has already come down and it's actually cytokine storm that is wrecking havoc to your patient, okay? So, but if you catch the patients early, you may give them dutasteride, finasteride, or spironolac. Now, so this is what we've added as part of the home treatment protocols, vitamin C. We found out patients on vitamin C drip significantly feel better even while they are on the drip, especially those with high uh, cytokine storm activity. Once you put them on IV vitamin C, they feel a significant improvement in their well-being. So the dosing for sodium ascorbate IV is 50 to 100 milligrams per kilogram or 1.5 grams every six hours. Now, there are doctors who are very... Uh, proficient already, they're very confident they can give 50, 30, milligram, 30 grams vitamin C or 50 grams vitamin C, some even 100 grams of vitamin C every day. If you are confident, you may opt to do that. However, I would suggest if you're going to give them vitamin C, do it as a slow drip rather than a very fast drip because you want the vitamin C to actually negate the cytokine storm decrease interleukins, decrease those cytokines. If you give vitamin C on a very uh, fast drip, then you might actually cause a more significant oxidative stress as high dose vitamin C given on a very fast, very fast uh, timing would actually cause more oxidative stress, okay? Now, together with as vitamin C, you may also give n acetylcysteine which is also uh, significantly uh, improves uh, patients not only their cytokine storm, but may also improve their liver function. So if n acetylcysteine IV is not available, you may give glutathione. Please remember, do not mix glutathione or n acetylcysteine together with your other vitamins or other drugs as it might deactivate or oxidize your n acetylcysteine or glutathione, okay? Now, of course, if you already have access to IV, we would always suggest you to give it IV, the steroids. So the dosing for the steroids, 80 to 100, 250 milligrams, depending, bolus, depending on the severity. And then you follow it up with 40 to 125 milligrams every 12, six, even you can even give it every six to 12 hours. If you're not, if methylprednisolone is not available, you may give IV dexamethasone six milligrams every 12 hours. Okay. Now, for those who have um, 
for those who have uh, access to heparin or enoxaparin, you may give this instead of giving aspirin or apixaban. It's 0.5 milligram per kilogram subcutaneous every 12 hours. Okay. Now, for those doing IV drips, uh, you may add in your selenium, zinc, or magnesium if available. Now, also we've added into our management is lung or chest management. So we notice a lot of patients who always lie on their back, which is not good because that will actually decrease their oxygen saturation. So we always ask them to lie on a prone position. And very important, aside from lying prone position, they may actually do what we call chest tapping vibration while executing postural drainage. So what happens is they lying on their back and do you do chest tapping, which improves their oxygenation by mobilizing their mucus plugs and secretion. So their oxygen levels actually improves faster when you do this uh, chest tapping or vibration. For some uh, practitioners, you may also do what we call gua sha or the lymphatic drainage, which also seems to help patients who have severe uh, chronic cough and phlegm. So, but also be careful in patients already on heparin or fixaban uh, not to do uh, very uh, strong uh, lymphatic drainage as they might cause hematoma, okay? Deep breathing exercises. So the, the reason you do deep breathing exercises is not only to expand the lungs, but it's actually to help uh, make your lesser respiratory muscles work uh, or it becomes better. As, you're, as you keep on lying on the bed, your respiratory muscles also decrease in their uh, strength. So it's better to do deep breathing exercises every, every day, even if you feel tired, you have to tell them to do this as it will help them be able to wean off their oxygen as soon as possible. So aside from their deep breathing exercises, of course, some cardio exercises would be of benefit. Now, together with your chest management, very important is your diet. We want to avoid patients developing too much mucus or secretions in the lung. And how do we do that? We avoid giving them milk, cheese, and dairy, citrus fruits, bread, and pastries, okay? These are what we call phlegm-forming foods, so we have to avoid giving it to them, okay? Also, uh, we avoid patients giving them high glycemic food, glycemic food index, meaning everything is high in sugar. We avoid, why? Because they are on steroids already. If you give them foods that are high in sugar, that will severely affect their blood sugar levels. Uh, which also will uh, translate to uh, patients having a hard time recovering. As your sugar goes higher, of course, your white blood cells or your immune system actually decreases or declines in their uh, function or activity. Okay, So we always suggest to give easily digested foods with high caloric index, bone broths, could be beef, could be chicken, uh, beans, you can also give them virgin coconut oil, which you do not need to digest because virgin coconut oil or what we call the, the medium chain triglycerides are absorbed passively into your small intestine without any help from your digestive enzymes. So again, these are just the special uh, precautions in patients who are on ivermectin. Uh, this has been discussed already in the previous uh, protocol. Just to note, in pregnant and lactating women, we do not recommend. However, if they have severe, moderate to severe COVID, you may opt to give them ivermectin, okay? Now, for kids, normally, we do not advise to give uh, ivermectin as they have very, very mild symptoms. Usually, after three days, they're already well. It's just a, it's just a simple cold to them, okay? Unless they have other comorbidities, okay? So, again, ivermectin, does not have any effect on vaccine efficacy, okay? So just to remind everyone with regards to that. So uh, with that, uh, thank you everyone for listening. I hope uh, this update helps you, helps your patients. Thank you. This is Dr. Homalim again. Have a good day.
Thank you for listening to your Holistic Health Podcast. This is Dr. Homer Lim. Now, if you do have questions about your health or you would like to request topics for our next podcast, please do message us at our FB page or Instagram at Akesis Holistic Health or you may visit our website at www.akesisholistic.com Thank you again and please do come back for our next episodes.